Welcome everybody to this information session on a rise together in Christ. My name is Paul Krenzelak. I am a staff member with Renew International and I'm here today with Sister Ruth. Sister Ruth, would you like to say a few words? I'm Ruth Pollard, the Sister Servant of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, a part of the um, adjunct staff um, here at Renew International. A pleasure to be here. And we're so happy that you're here with us today to learn more about Arise Together in Christ. And what we're going to do really is share the key purposes of Arise. And that is one, to help people grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ, and two, to make disciples. And we will also share with you some uh, how, how you go about implementing Arise. So before we go further into all of that, we're going to begin with some prayer led by Sister Ruth. And I'm trying to advance the screen here. It's not cooperating. There we go. All right, Sister Ruth. Recognizing God's presence among us, we say, Dear God, our maker and our goal, may we grow more near to you every day as we recognize the many opportunities that arise in our lives to grow in holiness through actions, great and small, of peace, mercy, generosity, and justice. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So before we delve into a rise together in Christ, we want to share just a few words about Renew International. The mission statement of Renew is to renew personal faith and parish life, unlocking the power of small groups. The key word there, of course, is renew. And by renew, we mean revitalize to make the church a thriving community. And we do that specifically through revitalizing personal faith and parish life. And those two things go hand in hand. And the other aspect are small groups, of course, and the faith sharing that happens within small groups. That's really where the transformation takes place. So Sister Ruth will speak more about that, and I'll share a little bit more as well. So of course, you see uh, Pope Francis here on the screen. And Pope Francis wrote a really important document back in 2013 called The Joy of the Gospel. And what Pope Francis talked about were two really important uh, key concepts. One of them was the idea of encounter. We are all invited to encounter Christ in a deep and personal and transforming way. And then the other thing that he stressed very much so is the idea of discipleship. But he used the word missionary before discipleship. So he invites us to missionary discipleship. And by using that word missionary, he really focuses on the idea that as disciples, we are called to go outward. There's no such thing as being a disciple and having just a me and God or me and Jesus type of relationship. It has to go outward. Those two things, encounter and missionary discipleship, really fit with those two pillars I just talked about. The idea of growing and strengthening our relationship with Jesus Christ, that's encounter, and also the idea of making disciples and everything there, therefore he talks about is being missionary disciples. This document by Pope Francis is really part of the continuing uh, exploration and development of what we call the new evangelization which began in the 1970s, was really taken to new levels and new understanding by Pope John Paul II, and has been continued uh, with Pope Benedict and now Pope Francis. 
when we speak about the new evangelization, what is it that we really mean? What we're speaking of is the idea that evangelization is not only for those who do not know Jesus, but evangelization needs to be also for the people in the pews. The truth is, there are many people in the pews who do not have a strong relationship with Jesus Christ. And this church has come to a deep recognition of this. So we need to be evangelizing the people who are in front of us perhaps every Sunday. And, and also to recognize that we cannot make disciples unless people first have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So arise, it really focuses on these themes of the new evangelization. And finally, I just want to say that the power that happens in small groups is really through the power of faith sharing. People share their stories of faith, of transformation, how an encounter with Jesus has changed their lives, and hearing those stories from each other in light of the story of our faith, the story of how God loves us, is really what makes this all work and where transformation happens. Momentarily, I'm going to share a video with you, and that's a video of a person. Uh, his name is Bob, and I share this story not because it's really extraordinary, but because it's so ordinary. Bob really talks about his journey, which is the journey of so many people who have participated in Arise, of coming to know Jesus more deeply, which, has moved, which moved him into greater discipleship. My mom did show me the importance of faith. She was a good role model. Uh, she took me to Buffalo Baptist Church, and I felt God tugging at me during that point in my life. Um, I, I knew there was something special. We would go up and get saved. I never did that. I don't know why. I never went up during church and said, God, here I am. Yeah, I was an only child. I, was the, I thought the world revolved around me. Even though that we didn't have a lot of money, um, my dad was going to pay for my education. When I got to college, there was something inside me that said, are you good enough to make it in this world? Are you smart enough to make it in this world? And I drove myself into a depression. And uh, anxiety, Very every time a test would come up, uh, you know, I'd go out and party. You know, and that became a habit. I would continue to throw myself in my work. I did not care if I lived or died. Uh, I never tried to hurt myself, but it, it, it got to that point. You know, I would call out to God in deep desperation. Those were the those were the times that I would call out to Him. It was desperation, like God, please help me. To fast forward just a little bit, um, I, I met a very special person. Her name was Laura Beth. She just had a peace about her. Uh, and she it was a quiet peace. She was 25 years old at the time when we first got married. Pretty quickly we realized that we needed faith. We knew that we wanted to be one unit. I came from a Protestant background. Hers, she came from a Catholic background. We found, found a parish at St. Athanasius that we really, really liked. Uh, so we started going there. It really wasn't about going to church. It was more about going with her. Uh, I, I, was, I was sitting in church one day and I got this feeling that you need to go talk to the priest about you. You've been going to church just to be with her for a long time. And something told me it's about you now. And I, I, I told Father Terry, I said, I just, if I had one wish, I wish that he would take this anxiety and depression away from me. And the words that came back weren't what I expected to hear. No, you don't. He said, because the anxiety and the depression made you call out to God for help and brought you to him and will give you eternal life. 
So I went through the RCI process. It was about a year. Great. It was awesome. I, I loved every minute of it. And then once I got baptized and confirmed, the director of religious education said, won't you just stay around? I've been involved in that for the last eight, nine years. Now I felt confident in my knowledge about the Catholic faith, and I realized I could help some of the people that have been Catholic all their life go down that road. I was doubting Thomas. Because of that, God said, <laughs> I'm going to show you. He took that anxious, depressed person, and just like Father told me way back when, he will take that and he will transform it. So with the story of Bob, really you may have noticed the word turning points. That's what we're sharing with each other in these small groups, the turning points of our deeper conversion to a deepening relationship with Jesus Christ. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sister Ruth, who will share a little bit more about the small group process. As Paul mentioned, the key piece in this new evangelization and this process of Arise is small groups. The small groups can take place um, at homes. Uh, other times it takes place in the parish, in the hall, or uh, in some, uh, some other space that the parish may have. Groups are uh, between six and 11 people that gather. There's usually a facilitator, and it's a scripture base. The five key elements of every small group are prayer, sharing, learning, support, and mission. Sessions are usually with around an hour and a half or two hours. Uh, next slide, please, Paul. So these small groups constitute a community of many communities. As the small groups gather in special events in the parish, the, we manifest the diversity that is part of the parish. Many times the small groups might be focused on age groups, sometimes on interest, geography, but when it's time, the parish gathers all these small groups and celebrate their unity in their diversity. Next one, uh, Paul. Arise is a process. It's not so much a, a program center, but people center. There are five seasons. The first one focuses in the encounter of the individual with Christ, getting to know who is Jesus. And if this encounter leads to a conversion, which leads me to want to follow Jesus, the example of Jesus in my life, in my daily life thus creating a new person, a transforming of myself, which in its place is going to lead me and all those involved in, uh, in my faith community to go out and proclaim the good news and make these missionary disciples. Every, every season has a, 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 a theme that is going to be uh, the guide through for all the sessions during the week. Thanks. So when you sign up for Renew, um, you get much more than just the, the books, the face sharing books that Sister Ruth just uh, talked about. When you sign up for Arise, you're also assigned a uh, pastoral representative. And this person will accompany you 
throughout the process. So this person will be responsible for training a parish coordinating team that you have. And I'll share more about the, that team in a moment. This person will train the small group facilitators. Uh, the pastoral services representative will be there for consultation throughout the process, just an email or a phone call away so you can stay in touch throughout the entire time. The other thing, in addition to the fact of that accompaniment by the pastoral representative, will be that you will have access to a vast library of online resources. And we have a great library. Um, this library will have things such as promotional materials so that you don't have to recreate all the bulletin announcements you would want to do or articles. You know, it has posters. Um, it talks a lot with how you work with volunteers in terms of strategies for recruiting them, for training them. There's online training modules. And um, also there's a lot in there about how you launch the process from both the messaging you want and the strategic perspective. So these are vast. I should also say right now that the trainings that will happen are going to be virtual and they will most likely happen regionally. So we will do that, let's say, if you're doing this with other parishes in a diocese, we would do that and conduct that training virtually with all of you at the same time. It will be live and it will be interactive, so there will be ample opportunity uh, to ask questions and interact during those trainings. So I mentioned in the last slide, the parish coordinating team. This is your team that really energizes the process and organizes the process. So typically you're looking at three to six persons, could be some combination of staff or volunteers. Um, it could be, it could be you know, non-staff persons who are doing this, but usually there's a staff person, at least one who's very concretely involved in the parish coordinating team. And again, they oversee the process, are in charge of all the logistics. And the other thing is I capitalize energize. You just want enthusiastic people who will spread the word. So that's why when you assemble this team, it's good to have a variety of gifts represented. That person or persons who are really good organizationally, but also a person or two we're good at spreading the word enthusiastically. And so you want ideally a few people, three to six, just because you are trying to create ownership in the process and get that word out there and spread the excitement. Um, and again, as I mentioned, there is the training that will happen for this team. And I'll say a bit more about this in uh, a little bit later. And as well. They're the small group facilitators and the pastoral representative will train this group. And oftentimes people are maybe a little bit nervous if they haven't done this before about really if they, they have what it takes. And what I want to assure you is that we do spend time training the facilitators in terms of key skills that they need. And also, we, before each season, overview the main themes. So Sister Ruth talked about the different themes of the books a little bit ago. So for instance, that second theme is all about, second season is all about conversion. So we'll talk about what conversion means in our faith and give examples to help the small group leaders be a few steps ahead of the people who they're facilitating. Mostly what people need as small group facilitators is a sense of welcome and hospitality. So when you're inviting people to do this, that's what you're going to be looking for. We'll help you with the skills and any theological concepts. We can train you, but what you naturally need are people who are hospitable and welcoming. When you sign up for a RISE, you get a parish kit, and it involves all of the things that you see on the screen before you. 
So it has at least one set of copies of the books that Sister Ruth talked about. There's uh, music that's accompanied uh, that goes along with sessions throughout the seasons. So you get a complete set of C CDs for the music for each season. And uh, most of those songs can also be found online. Down in the lower left, you'll see a handbook. And this is really your Bible. So there are a lot of resources, uh, resources that are online, but this book also has other resources that aren't online. And this details meetings, let's say, for that parish coordinating team in terms of as you're preparing this process for the parish, gives a complete outline for each meeting, what you need to accomplish, uh, the strategies you need to employ to make things happen. It has some prayer services in terms of commissionings for your parish team or small groups. And it also has um, celebrations that you can use in your parish at the end of each season because you'll wanna gather everybody together. Um, and uh, as you can see, there are small group guides, the essential for leading small groups. Down kind of on the lower right, there are uh, samples for youth materials. So the neat thing about Arise, at least for English, is that every session for the youth, uh, for the adult process, also has a session for youth, for grades one through three, four through six, and then seventh uh, through high school. And if you're doing family catechesis in your parish, or uh, even just inviting your know, parents to work with their kids at home, this would work really well. I also just remembered one thing I wanna say about the small group facilitators is that in this new reality we're in right now where online is so much more important uh, it needs to be an option probably in most cases. We will also train small group leaders into how to facilitate groups online. So parishes may have a combination. There may be some groups that are in person. There may be groups online. We'll train you for both. Unifying and flexible. Uh, Arise comes in eight different languages, as you can see there and uh, also in large print. So I, I think, as you can see, it, we're really able to use Arise and bring it to many different language groups within the church. So program investment. Let me fill out the slide a little bit here. So in all, the entire process, if you, add up those first two costs, 2000 and 299, the cost for a rise in the entire two and a half to three year process is $2,300. So uh, that includes the 2000, includes all of the workshops that you will receive. So there's really six in all. There's one for the parish coordinating team that launches this whole thing. And then there's a training that happens before each season. So those are the trainings I talked about that one, talk about uh, skills, but two, goes over the theological themes before each season. And it also includes access to the entire web library, which is important, key as a matter of fact, and the ongoing consultation and support. Uh, the leadership uh, kit or handbook is an additional $300. You will need that as part of this. And then the face sharing books are $9.99 a piece. And what we really recommend is that you pass this cost on to people who to participate in the process, just so that they have some investment in this whole thing. Timeline. It's very possible. Uh, to do this, uh, normally we start in the fall, so uh, for a rise. So the training would have to happen at least by August. And the first training would be for that parish coordinating team. And I say two parts. The, the two parts really are one, going over the vision for a rise. And that comes back to those two pillars I talked about helping people really grow and deepen in their relationship with Christ. 
and two, making missionary disciples. So that's what we're trying to do in terms of bringing transformation to the parish and transformation that will invite the parish to be an evangelizers out in the world. And the other part is then of this training is to really go over the logistics. How do you implement this whole process? Then in September, we would train the small group facilitators. And finally in October is when the first season would begin. And that would begin probably around the second week of October, uh, ending before Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Sister Ruth to, to bring it home. So what are they saying about our rice? A rice is the best thing that ever happened to me and my parish. It kindled a deep sense of desire for God in my parishioners' lives. As we have said, we, the five elements of the small groups, prayer, sharing, learning, support, and mission, happen through the sharing of our stories. So as we, uh, we're, um, we're going to share a story of many participants that have participated in this process of Arise Now. It was the smartest decision I ever made with going to Arise. It, it was the, I needed something in my life. I didn't realize how much I needed it until I, I started coming, but it has been the best decision I ever made. I feel like I have a deeper understanding and appreciation for the Gospels and just life in general. I, I look around and I see things differently. The Holy Spirit was so obviously present among us. And it was the work of the Holy Spirit, and that only happened because hearts were opened in that community of sharing. It was a very powerful experience and a, a great way to come together. Um, and of course, now when we see them at church, it's more than, hi, how are you doing? It's a, um, a, a true uh, meeting of, of friends. Kind of a surprise to me to see so many other young people who were interested in uh, reflecting on their faith every week and, and being challenged to live out uh, a Catholic life. I thank God for the opportunity to be part of this faith sharing and uh, it's something I would love to do again and again. <laughs> so um, as you can see, that's our con my contact information. Um, and uh, please feel free to call me, to email me. I would love to talk to you more about Arise, and um, I'm just going to invite, as we reflect today and you watch this, Sister Ruth to offer a closing prayer before we go, and then we will let you be on your way. Thank you so much for being with us. Loving God, continue pouring your Holy Spirit upon us as we fulfill Jesus' mission to proclaim the good news to all. Amen. Amen. Thank you all again, and we look forward to hearing you from you. God bless. God bless.